Please don't send me hate tweets when I say this, but there exists some instances when the sexes are just not equal. No matter how you twist or turn it, research shows that men and women metabolize alcohol differently. And those gender differences extend past science and into culture when it comes to cocktails. And those differences can have some pretty dire consequences. The article that stemmed this conversation is seven things that you need to know about women and alcohol. And the first one on this list is more women are binge drinking. I don't know if you guys have been checking out the Huffington Post recently, but this article um, about a student has gone pretty viral. Samantha Lynn Goody, drunk girl, blows a .341 in jail and tweets YOLO. Now, you'd love to look at something like this and think that it's popular because it happens so rarely, but as we just sort of found out, women are binge drinking more and more. Gabrielle, from everything that you've researched, why do you think women are binge drinking more? I think it has to do with the fact that we have accepted alcohol as a, as a way to relax, as a safe and healthy way to relax, when in fact, a lot of people are overdoing it a lot. Is there this sort of pervasive competitive nature with women, especially young women, college age women, sort of compete with other women with how much they can drink and with men, you know, regarding to how much they can drink? I, I think I think so. I also think uh, that it is more acceptable today to drink along with men and drink as much as they do, especially in college environments. It's, it's not necessarily frowned upon. It is a normal activity. And young women do try to keep up with their male counterparts, and we just can't do it physiologically. The second point on this list is women drink less well than men. How women metabolize alcohol differently, how does that work? Um, I think it's still not completely teased out, um, but in general, you know, women tend to be a little smaller or they have um, less water per pound than men do. Um, and so obviously, like, the amount of alcohol that you put in your body, if it's not being, you know, diluted out differently, it's, it's just different. Drinking becomes problematic for women at lower levels, and that's essentially what that's highlighting, that since you are, as a female, metabolizing the alcohol in a different way, you're going to be at risk for alcohol-related problems later. What are some of those, those alcohol-related problems? You mentioned not being able to see them immediately, but right. what are they down the line? Right. Well, um, I mean, breast cancer is kind of a big one. A study just came out in the last week, actually, um, showing that uh, the more you drink between your first period and your first pregnancy, the higher your risk of breast cancer later on. And granted, breast cancer is an incredibly complex disease. That and, is one you know. of the, that is actually the sixth point on yeah. this list, drinking ups your breast cancer risk. So tell me a little bit more about the study. Um, well, that particular study, um, I actually covered it um, earlier. Uh, but basically, that, that, that's what it is. The higher your risk of developing breast cancer will be. And, and granted, it was an observational study, so you can't you know, prove one thing or another, but alcohol is considered you know, uh, a cause of cancer. Um, the IARC considers it that. So uh, the study was just looking at the timing of it. Number four on this list is you know, they seek treatment sooner. And it's one of these points where it's bad that these women have to, unfortunate that these women have to seek treatment, but better that this is a gender difference where they are trying to get help sooner. And Amanda, you actually wrote on this, so tell me about this. Um, right, so I mean, it was just kind of an observational thing again, so we can't exactly say why they were doing that, um, though some of the reasons might be maybe they feel like there's not as much stigma attached for women than men. I mean, I'm not sure, uh, but you know, it's good news. We really can't have this conversation without talking about number five, which is during pregnancy, no amount has been proven safe. Because if there, and if there's one difference between the genders that we can all agree <laughs> on when it comes to anything, particularly alcohol, it's the fact that women, you know, can get pregnant and men cannot. Here's what I would say. Certainly in the first trimester, no, no amount of alcohol is safe. The research shows that we know that. Um, in the last trimester, I, I was told, I have three kids, I was told by doctors I had three kids in three different places, and I was told at the end of my pregnancy, an occasional glass of wine is okay. Certainly not regularly, certainly not a lot of it, and I just tried to, to limit that to a, a, you know, a couple of sips on a Friday or Saturday night. I, I, I'm not a, a, a physician, so I, I can't actually weigh in on, on, on this one. I think that's really up to a woman and her doctor.